as a sign of respect that they offer. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you very much, and I want to thank Postmaster General DeJoy, and I want to thank uh, the Chairman of the Board, uh, Mr. Duncan, uh, for your patient answering of our questions. Um, as both of you know, it was President Nixon in 1970 who uh, signed a very major postal reform bill to guarantee the independence of the post office. And on the Postal Service website, its history uh, speaks about that bill as something that was to, quote, remove the Postal Service uh, from politics. And I assume that both of you agree that that is an essential mission uh, of the post office. Yes, sir. Mr. DeJoy, I'll ask you. All right. Uh, and Mr. DeJoy, I, I have asked for a document uh, labeled the Joy Political Donations uh, chart to be uh, presented, and uh, I'd ask, I want to ask you a few questions about that. Uh, Mr. DeJoy, I mean, obviously you have the right to make political donations uh, within the law, and I have no dispute with that, but I do want to go through them uh, because of these questions that are being raised. According to the Federal Election Commission records, since 2016, you've donated uh, $3.2 $3 million uh, to Republican candidates and committees. Uh, does that sound right? Sounds about right, yeah. Yeah, and the Republican National Committee was the beneficiary of $1.3 million in uh, contributions, correct? Yes, I am a Republican, sir. Right. And you contributed $1.2 million to President Trump's Trump Victory Fund, correct? Uh, I would need to check that, but it sounds about right. Okay. Um, and my understanding is that uh, in May of uh, 2019, you were announced as the uh, chairman of the Republican National Convention uh, Fundraising uh, committee uh, for the convention that was, was to take place in Charlotte. Is that correct? Yes, that is a not-for-profit foundation that was selected by the Charlotte Host Committee, which is a, usually a bipartisan in, in conventions uh, for the city. Right, and that you, it's, you stayed on that position until June 12, 2020, shortly before you took over officially as the Postmaster General, correct? I did, sir. Right. And in June, of, from January to April of this year, in the run up before you were selected as Postmaster General, <clears throat> you provided 18 contributions uh, in the amount of about $650,000 to various Republican committees, correct? Uh, you seem to have something in front of you. I don't know what you're looking at, but I give a lot of money. Let's, let's go for the record. I give a lot of money to Republicans. Right. And let me just ask an obvious question. Um, you obviously support the Republicans. That's obvious. It's totally within your right. You're a big supporter of President Trump. Totally within your right. How do you square being a major supporter of the president and Republican committees and other members with the independence that's required of the postmaster general? Can you really do both? Absolutely, sir. Well, you're aware of the fact, of course, that President Trump uh, has made very hostile statements about the Postal Service. He called the Postal Service a joke. I assume you disagree with that? I do, sir. And he has also vehemently and repeatedly attacked mail-in voting, saying, and I'll quote, mail-in ballots will lead to massive electoral fraud in a rigged 2020 election. Do you agree with that? Uh, I, I'm in charge of delivering ballots. I don't really want to comment on what, that's not my responsibility, elect, electoral. Uh, it, it, I'll leave it, that to the states. It's not, but there, would you, is it your view that if there I, is fraud, it will have nothing to do with the United States Postal Service? It is my view that there, if there is Mass, I mean, if there is fraud, it will, it's our attempt not to have any fraud with, have to do with the United States Postal Service, yes. But, but if the mail is not delivered on time, and Republicans and Democrats who 
do vote by mail do not have a timely delivery of that ballot to their town clerks. That, in fact, will result in them being disenfranchised. Is that not correct? Uh, the mail will be delivered on time, sir. Well, we've heard that you have made significant reforms uh, to try to improve postal service, but it's resulted in significant delays, and those delays have coincided, of course, with the run-up to the election. You've heard, and you've apologized for that. It's not just the postal boxes, the blue boxes, and the mail sorting machines. Uh, but you heard from Congressman Cooper uh, that the requirement about the, trucks the gentleman's leaving time has time. expired. The gentleman's time has expired, but the gentleman may answer the question. Th 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 thank you. Thank you, Congressman. Uh, again, I'll repeat, I had nothing to do with the, with the collection boxes, the sorting machines, the postal, post office hours, or limiting overtime. Uh, the change I made was ask the team to run the trucks transportation on time and uh, mitigate extra trips uh, based on a, a review of an IG, OIG audit uh, that was uh, absolutely astonishing in the, the amount of money we were spending, uh, spending and the number of late trips and extra trips we were, were, were running. Uh, it was a plan that was rolled out with operations uh, and it's a very, very important aspect of the network. It, it, it's a very, people ask why, why, why do trucks matter? Why do on-time trucks matter? They do matter. They're, it's a fundamental premise of how the whole mail network is put together. If the, if the trucks don't run on time, the mail carriers can't leave on time, they're out there at night, they, uh, they have to come back and get more mail, collection processes are late, uh, 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 plant processes are, are distorted. Uh, uh, I see several billion dollars in potential savings uh, in, 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 in getting the system to, uh, uh, to connect properly, and that's why we ran out and uh, 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 put a plan together to, to really get this fundamental basic principle, run your trucks on time. I find it really, uh, you know, uh, 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 I, I, would not, I would not know how to reverse that now, am I to say, don't run the trucks on time? Is that the answer that we're looking to get me to say here today? I think the question was, Listen, why don't we fill the trucks? The gentleman's time has expired. expired.